हेलो एंड थैंक यू फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टू लेट्स थिंक अलाउड डॉट कॉम ओपन पार्टिसिपेट एंगेज एंड नेगोशिएट इज अ प्री फेस्टिवल ऑफ आइडियाज फ्रॉम द सिंगापोर इंटरनेशनल फेस्टिवल ऑफ आर्ट्स ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन एंड टूडे राइट नाउ ऑन लेट्स थिंक अलाउड डॉट कॉम वी हैव सम वन हु इज ट्रेंड इन द क्लासिकल डांस फॉर्म भरतनाट्यम वन ऑफ द वेरी फ्यू मेल डांसर्स टू डू सो एंड द फर्स्ट सिख टू हैव टेकन अप द आर्ट फॉर्म मिस्टर नवतेज जौहर हु इज ऑल्सो अ योगा प्रैक्टिशनर विल बी इन थ्रॉलिंग अस विथ हिज एक्ट टाइटल्ड फ्रेनिमीज ऑन जुलाई सेकेंड थर्ड and fourth of this year so let's get to know mr johar a bit more who has in the past collaborated with composer stephen drash shubha mutgal and installation artist shiba chachi among others hello mr johar and thank you for joining us on let's think aloud.com hello how are you doing sir thank you i'm i'm very well thank you uh let's talk a little about you before i jump into frenemies mr johar for the singapore international festival of arts bharatanatyam okay What set your interest many 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 years back in the dance form and your journey thereafter? Uh sure this was uh, many years ago as you said um, I was still in college and I was getting interested I, I was I began to realize that my interest lay in the arts and I started to pursue or at least start to explore the possibilities of arts Mm-hmm. and uh, at that point uh, i uh, a dance was not even an option those days because i was growing up in north of india and punjab in chandigarh to be precise right. and uh, there was absolutely no scope of, of dance so um, it was not even on the horizon mm-hmm. and uh, so i started to do theater okay and while i was doing theater i realized that my body wanted more than just acting and i was getting bored of you know just i found dance to be about theater to be too vociferous it was full of speech Right. and i wanted my body to express itself so i realized that my body had a need to move and express itself and i was told by my director that i had an expressive body and i should pursue dance mm-hmm. so that's when i started looking into dance and uh, it took me a couple of years to actually figure out which form to opt for okay and finally i opted for bharatanatyam and kalakshetra lovely so before i dig a little more into the kind of work that you do uh, could you tell us about frenemies that is uh, happening in singapore as part of the singapore international festival of arts this year frenemies sure uh, frenemies i would say is is a sequel to two other works that i've already done uh, pretty much in the same uh, frame so to speak mm-hmm. and uh, the frame is basically i've been trying to explore the the master servant relationship Okay. um coming from places like india and of course southeast asia we have servants mm-hmm. uh and i i've always been kind of you know intrigued and fascinated and curious about how uh these people who are uh you know they come from a life of deprivation and they live in such proximity with the rich so they see richness so to speak from the inside so what what goes on through their heads so to speak how do they deal with it you know it can range from being very servile Mm-hmm. and there's also you know a kind of a transference to begin to identify uh, with each other with the with the masters or with each other whatever and in some cases it also becomes very hostile um, and very uh, and the hostility is provoked by the masters i mean to the point that some um, yeah, that there is violence to the point of even like you know there there are some servants who kill the master so to speak right basically it's the volatility of this relationship that i had been exploring and i made a piece uh, based on doris lessing's uh, the grass is singing uh, which is a, a relationship between um, a white mistress and a black servant slash slave okay. in south africa the second piece was called um, charumati claire singh and it was uh, based on the maids a bajine in which these two maids you know they trapped in a house like most servants are and mm-hmm. then while away the time impersonating the madam wearing her clothes and her, uh, her perfumes and her lipsticks and whatever mm-hmm. and but they also plotting to kill her so i'm still exploring the volatility between um a servant master or and devadasi is also a servant dasi means servant right um so uh, she is a servant of the god she serves the god as well as the patron and she's available she is she's available to the patron so to speak mm-hmm. uh so the volatility of the relationship of service and the difference between serving within a domestic sphere and serving within uh the sphere of so to speak a pleasure woman mm-hmm. um and how these uh, how this volatility kind of gets transmuted in either direction um in a in a in a in a domestic sphere it can become very volatile um and full of resentment and anger and so what i'm trying to say in this piece is that this volatility takes on 
an aesthetic turn mm-hmm. through the song of Devdasi because Devdasi has the skill of music. She right. can escape the horrors of this this ghettoized existence because it's a ghettoized existence to uh, to another level. In a way, I'm trying to explore the underside of beauty, which is uh, the the violent underside of beauty because the Thumri can be sublimely beautiful, the Padam mm-hmm. can be sublimely beautiful. It's I mean, to the point of being sacred. Right. And yet, it comes from, so to speak, the gutter. Within social norms is a very undesirable place or a very unacceptable place. Right. Definitely worth a watch. Um, you know, I was also wanting to ask you, and while you were talking, uh, I was thinking that how does your choreographic work that evolves with yoga, with the classical dance form and physical theatre, all put in together function with such fluidity how do you manage to do that well, first of all because i mean i use um, when it comes to the classical form of dance uh, i mean if you just identify with the form of dance it can be very restrictive right um because um it is so prescribed and so stylized and it has its own tyranny so to speak mm-hmm. um but my identification is not really with the form as such but the aesthetics of the form uh, the sensibility of the form and mm-hmm. more than anything else the musicality of the form which is the musicality of the form is far more abstract than the visibility of the form or the visual of the form so to speak right. so my work doesn't necessarily look like bharatanatyam so it's not fusion it's the aesthetics uh, rather than the form when it comes to yoga it is the um, uh, it's the fluidity of the body and more than the fluidity coming I mean, for me yoga is to occupy a very unbiased position so it's the classical and the uh, the unconventional form the the balance between the two mm-hmm. and uh, uh, viewing them both from a very unbiased space a position and uh, then of course physical theater which also delves into the body not just the form of the body but the interiority of the body but the basic thrust of the piece is that i'm trying to make a very clear shift where i'm trying to explore that uh, the feeling that generates within the body doesn't necessarily come from the heart but it actually emanates from the physicality or the materiality of the body that it is the bones and the joints of the body that can actually generate a feeling and this comes directly from yoga that hum we do yoga we, we just go and manipulate joints and bones and you know because we, we move so to speak mm-hmm. and at the end of the session we feel so completely different well so i can't wait to see how all these words finally inculcate into a beautiful performance that we get to see in july i'm really looking forward to it you know you are also known mr johar to challenge the boundaries between the traditional and the contemporary in your bold dazzling pieces how challenging is it to do that it is challenging because we are up against sort of the conventional resistance and it's, um, in india it's, it's big because india culture is a national property mm-hmm. and art is a national property like so we are up against the uh, you know the mandate of the nation so to speak it is difficult but on the other hand it just requires i mean it's difficult but it's also doable it just requires more homework so to speak mm-hmm. to be able to push through this resistance and be able to um you know uh, create a valid space for yourself and to right. be able to defend it uh, both through your work and through your thoughts and words so to speak so i mean it just requires more work because we are going against the stream as opposed to somebody who is conventional and doing going you know along the, the stream so it right. it requires that i do have to have to do extra homework frenemies which uh, happens on july 2nd 3rd and 4th it, this is a one hour performance right it's about approximately one hour performance you also have a talk on july 4th with art enthusiasts do you want to give us a glimpse into what the talk is going to be about well it's going to be pretty much about what i've just spoken but of course far more elaborate Uh, about my belief in the body and the materiality of the body right my privileging material over idea mm-hmm. i'm very very clear about that i my resist to, to against the conventional lovely so looking forward to the three days when we would be able to witness frenemies and witness your complex yet very aesthetic work thank you so much mr johar for talking to us and joining us this afternoon thank you thank you himani thank you it's been a pleasure